did. So, Tuesday evening, if you're watching live, what is up? Today, as I woke up this morning, it was a uh, gentle reminder, or maybe a not so gentle reminder, to not take, man, that really, it's supposed to be a smooth fade, right? Like I'm slowly fading it down. It's supposed to disappear in your headphones, but it doesn't, I'm not running a board here. Anyway, a gentle reminder this morning that life is precious and to always remember that. And a lot of times, like I'll say to friends or I'll say to family or I'll say to, say to my wife, like you can't, can't sweat small stuff and it's impossible in, in everyday life not to sometimes. But when you saw what happened in Baltimore with the Francis Scott Key Bridge, where, I mean, Jesus, I've never, I've never seen anything like that. And it's, there's a thousand foot barge just took it down like it was, you know, like a Lego set. And people on there working and people just driving home from work or driving home for wherever. And they happen to be in the wrong spot at the wrong time. And boom. This world's crazy, man. Life's crazy. And that could have been any one of us. You never know. I that in Collegeville, where near where I used to live, I don't live there far from now, but there was right on Route 29, not far from the Wawa, if you know where it is, it was a really, really like bad wind rainstorm, and it knocked down a bunch of old trees right right along the road, knocked down this tree, landed right on the hood of a guy's car and killed him on impact this huge tree landed right on not not the hood but the the top of the car boom the roof and killed him and somehow there was a connection with my wife knew her his girlfriend or fiance or something like that and she had saw it on facebook and that was literally right by where we used to live they actually live in our old complex where we live there so again a reminder uh kiss your kids tell your wife your mom, everybody that you love them because uh, you never know. And that was, yeah, and I clicked on one of the links because I'm trying to get more information and a couple idiot uh, conspiracy theorists that are comparing it to when the tower, the World Trade Tower, like, oh, just like when the World Trade Tower went down so easy. It's like, idiot, it's a thousand, thousand foot barge that just smashed right into that you can drive a, like a dinghy or a speedboat into that post and it's not going to do anything you can't do that with a barge but anyway so that that's what i was doing this morning but uh, delco steve we will uh welcome you into the show i know it's like steve will be uh half in half out tonight because uh the flyers are currently entering the third period <laughs> <laughs> two, two to one over the rangers look at that the I figured I'd throw the jersey back on since the last time we wore it, they won, and I didn't yes. have it on the last time they were on, and they lost. So well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go back to the superstition. Well, you gotta get me a Flyers jersey. Maybe I could be good. I can send you one. So I got, in, I got plenty in Madison Square Garden. Flyers are up two to one. You would advise me that the Rangers are number one in the East. So this is a uh, number one period in the NHL right no. now. No. Yep. Oh, they have no shot of winning then. <laughs> like the Bruins set the Bruins set a, a point record last year, and they got bounced in the what the second round. Oh, you're saying the Rangers don't have a shot? Yeah, yeah. yeah these teams yeah, yeah. do. I thought this you meant the Flyers don't have a shot tonight. No, not the Flyers. No, no, no. I'm, yeah. I'm not negative on the Flyers. No, the Rangers aren't um, winning the Stanley Cup. It all depends on Sisterkin. If he's playing the way he's playing right now, they can make a run. Um. All right. Well, and and just because they're playing in the Garden, I actually. Have you ever been to the garden for a, a flyers? I have, or a I have not. It's it's on it's on the bucket list, dude. Gotta we got it. we got to go do it. You and I got to go do it. Maybe who I'm knows? In. Maybe maybe we bring other people. So this is when I worked at the fanatic when I worked with Sean Brace, and we was it right after we got that? I think it was right. No, you know what? No, it was before we had the flyers rights. But I, I was I was friends with people in the front office, people that worked for the communication staff. So we did a giveaway where we went up with two listeners and. My buddy, one of the sales reps who now actually runs iHeart in Philly, Jeff Moore, he got like limo trade. So we took a limo up to Madison Square Garden and saw the Flyers and the Rangers. And it was, I talk a lot about going to Chicago and sitting in the bleachers for the day game. Not quite as good of an experience, but like a great experience going up there. It was awesome. The Flyers lost. I remember that. 
But the two guys that I went up with ended up becoming <laughs> – well, I think we know I'm streaming, so I didn't see it. Shotney scores 2-2, 1837 left to go in the game. So these two guys, Bill, who, um, who may be watching this right now, and Bart, Bart won the tickets. He took his buddy Bill, their lifelong friends, and I became mm -hmm. friends with – I became friends with them. Like literally, I'm still 10 years later, I'm still friends with them. And so. Look at that hockey bringing people together. So maybe a year, it's a little bit over a year ago, I think now. It was a Friday night. I saw this story. I was working. I saw this story up on the TV in my studio at WIP that there was some kind of a shooting at the the FedEx facility down by the airport. And I didn't, and, and like the guy had, taken off and he was in a shootout with police in North Philly. That's just like a, that's a regular day in Philadelphia. People getting shot and killed and shooting the peace the police and things like that. I didn't think much of it. And I got a text message from Bill that says Bart was the one that was shot and killed at the FedEx facility. Oh my God. And he, I mean, he had texted, and this is a true story. I'm going to start to cry. He texted me the night before his daughter is a, is a weather She's a weather person and she was in Indiana. I think she's still out there, but he texted her like there's something off of Facebook because it was like a really, it was like a great report by her and he was so proud of her. And Bart used to, he was a full-time, he was a driver. He drove the tractor trailers. He was a, a trainer. He was an instructor and he worked part-time jobs because he didn't want his wife to have to work because he had three kids that he was trying to put through Catholic school, by the way. Bart's a Northeast Philly guy. He's like a, a great, great guy. And yeah, a guy that didn't get recommended for to be like a something didn't get recommended to be a, a driver. He ambushed them and shot and killed them. Um, so yeah, like like I was saying earlier, like you never yep, know. I was man. just about to say, never know. Say. And his 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 kids, and he's got such an unbelievable family and support system. But like it it kills me just to think about it. But so when I look at this and I look up at the garden, I went up with Bart and Bill. And, and, and they were wild. It was, it was a great night. So we got to go. The gardens, are, it's awesome. You can even take the train up. You don't even have to go, you don't have to go outside. Yeah, the, train, the train, up. the train right goes there. right underneath the stadium. And the, Rangers fans were, they were mean, but some guys that were in the row with us were buying us beers. Cause they were, they were getting a kick out of us. It was, it was fun. But then as we were leaving, people were throwing stuff at us because the Rangers were winning and it was probably like five minutes to go in the, in the third. Yeah. But we're the assholes. It's fine. Right. Well, I mean, I, we just, I don't care. They can throw stuff at yeah. me. I like that. As long as you don't throw a beer at me and get me soaked, you can you can curse at don't me. Stain, and... Don't stain my outfit. Right. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't throw, make me don't have to go home and get changed. Me. Yeah. You want to throw don't popcorn a... or something? Yeah, yeah. It's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Don't don't make me. This don't is actually their, comfortable. This is actually their first game in Madison Square Garden since November of twenty two. Apparently, which I don't know how that's even possible. Just huh? the, I guess the scheduling. They played early. I guess the beginning of last year, and they. Playing late at the end of this year there because they I think they play next week there. Oh fuck! They scored another goal. Oh come on, Delco Steve! Come uh, on, man! I'm even I'm talking about hockey on this show. And people are yep. like, people are rolling their eyes. Be like, come on, Marks, what are you doing talking about hockey? All right, we're out. It, as, as soon as we, as soon as it comes on, it goes to shit. They've been dominating this game the whole time. All right, whatever. It's Tortorella. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on, on to the next topic. Yeah, on on the on the Jeffrey Lurie. All right, so it's the owners' meetings. Jeffrey Lurie's down, and he gives his Jeffrey Lurie talk. The uh, the one thing that honestly, it's it's more compelling than what what I'll play here about Jalen Hurts, and I really just want to play it so I can stop playing it. But it was just too long of an answer. He spoke for like six minutes about why he he brought Nick Sirianni back. Here's the reality with Nick Sirianni coming back. And, and like, I, I got lost in what he, Jeffrey Lurie was saying. He's very well-spoken, and I like Jeffrey Lurie. He's a, he's a very good owner, right? But he's just like, blah, 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 Nick Sirianni, and we examine things. Blah, blah. He's a good owner. He knows what he's doing. Whatever the process is behind everything, he's trying to let us know what the process was. Blah, 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 blah. fine, whatever. But reality is Nick Sirianni had a 10-1 and football team that was in the Super Bowl and came damn close to winning a Super Bowl the year before. I wouldn't have fired him either. I wouldn't have fired him. I it's like he he earned another year, in my opinion. I, I wouldn't fire him. I because I like him too. 
But the fact that they brought in a new offensive coordinator to run their offense, Nick Sirianni is now really a CEO head coach. Uh, like now they got to win. And I can't imagine this is going to be a lot of fun for Nick Sirianni or to be an Eagles fan unless they're doing really well. Because doesn't yep. it feel like with a lot of the fans that anything that goes wrong, it's going to be pointed right at Nick Sirianni. Jalen Hurts is not going to be blamed here. Maybe by some people, but it's going to go to Nick Sirianni. What the bleep is he doing? It's not even his offense. Ugh. So, like, well, that was one thing think he if, he's make, if he makes the bonehead in-game coaching decisions now, like just time management, that kind of stuff, he's going to get crushed. Yeah. Well, the because that's is, now that's your job. That is one your job. good thing is he's been pretty good about that stuff. But to your point, now he can't mess that up. There's no excuses. Right. Exa- that's my point. Yeah, he's got no leeway on that because now that's you're managing the team at this point, and you're those are your main responsibilities now. You're not dictating the offense. You're not you're not sitting with the quarterback when the defense is on the field. All those things you got to make sure you're managing the entire game. Yeah, hey, I think you you had brought this up when because. They also announced today, the NFL announced that as we all knew, it just wasn't official. The Eagles are opening their season that Friday night game in Brazil. But what we didn't know, I guess it's not officially, It's well, it's definitely not officially the Browns, but the Packers, the president of the Packers said today that they're still in contention for the game. So I don't understand how it's not decided yet. Are the Browns resisting it or something? Because wasn't there a Browns player or personnel that went on radio and said they're going to be in, in Brazil week one? There was the guy that went on the ESPN radio Cleveland station, and he said something like that. Regardless, it's official. The Eagles are going to Brazil. Week one, Friday night game. I, I still I was reading it. People are still complaining about it. Like, hey, like this is awesome. It's great that the Eagles are going to Brazil. Who cares? Like, this is this is a big thing for the league, and this is a big thing for the Eagles too. And an inter- to become an international brand, maybe most people don't care about that. I think this is awesome. You got to embrace this. You got to embrace the fact that the Eagles are going to Brazil for the first game. Or I think it's awesome, but you know, it's not another home game and whatever. Blah 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 blah. That's not going to make or break the Eagles season. Either they're good enough or they're not good enough. So, so that was put out there today. All right, so let's hear. So if we can pull this up, Steve Jeffrey Laurie on Jalen Hurts. Because again, we're, we're gonna hear we're gonna hear Jeffrey Lurie, and then and he's talking about Jalen Hurts. Here's Jeffrey Lurie at the owners' meetings today. With Jalen, as I talked about earlier, he's 25 years old. Um, incredible last few years. Uh, disappointing ending of the last year as a team. Um, he, the thing with Jalen, and I, I mentioned about Nick, but the thing with Jalen is I want him to be authentic, and that's what he is. It's the worst thing to be. 24, 25, and to try to be something. Be authentic as he is. He's an excellent, excellent example. So, um, you know, there's times for the stoicism when, when we were 10 and 1, people said, oh, it's because of Jalen's uh, stoicism and calm under the storm that we were 10 and 1 on all those close games, and then lose a few, and ah, oh, maybe he's not, you know, uh, as demonstrative or whatever. I, I love the way Jalen is. I think uh, he has his own style. I think he'll, like every quarterback goes through ebbs and flows in their career. And so uh, there were so many ups and then we had a, a really a, you know, a difficult final five, six games of the year. He, uh, he will adjust to that and uh, lead the way because he's, he's, he's really respected. All right, all right, whatever. Um, so I, let, let me say this and we'll move on because one of the reasons that I, I'm I'm not working sports radio anymore is I don't really I don't have to care about what Harry Roseman said or what Jeff Lurie said or what whoever said down at these owner meetings unless they say something that I care about which you know anyway so he's sticking up for his quarterback he's not he's not gonna he's not gonna not support his quarterback so he's saying what he should right like he was just quoting AJ Brown exactly here's the reality is that. You need a you need a player like he was saying Jalen's being authentic and that's fine, but you need a player when you're losing games that teammates aren't now looking at him and saying like well why won't this guy talk to us right like why because he's right and we've said this many times when you're winning games it's cool that he doesn't talk to anybody and he's grumpy on the sidelines and everything else but when you're losing games that's when that's when the team needs to look to the quarterback and the quarterback needs to rally. Him. And that, that didn't happen last year. And that's my criticism of Jalen. So it's great he's authentic and he's this hard ass or whatever. I like Jalen Hurts a lot. I do. But he's got to lead a little bit better in that regard. 
Because when you start losing games, everybody looks to the quarterback and the head coach. And the quarterback didn't have anything for him. I mean, like, we can say he's injured and all this other stuff. And there was an adjustment made to Jalen Hurts, and that's his playing. Whatever. We're going to find out a lot about Justin Hurts, uh, Jalen Hurts, the player this year. But as far as the leadership style and all that stuff, I think it's pretty clear there needs to be some adjustments made as far as talking to the team on the sideline, not just sit on the bench and be miserable. Trust me, there's been enough stuff that's been put out there through reporting and other things that guys were at least – Fletcher Cox went up. According to Howard Eskin, who people on this on this show last night in the comments were saying is a lap dog for the Eagles organization. Howard Eskin came out and said that Fletcher Cox was not happy with his behavior on the sideline. So trust me, there's plenty of Eagles in that locker room that even though they might not have said something to his face or whatever else, didn't like what they did as the Flyers score a goal here. They're uh, now up 4-3. Three. Tied 3-3. Three, three. Or tied 3-3. Three, three. Oh, that's right. He shoots his goals! Who's, who got the goal there, uh, Steve? I think it was Konechny. Oh, TK? See that? Oh, that's awesome. I looked, I looked up late. I did. Yep, it was Konechny. I saw it live. So, yeah, he doesn't have to I, – I don't need him screaming at Tom Brady. I'm not I'm – not, I don't need him – Flipping it. I don't need him to be Larry Bowen flipping tables in the clubhouse or whatever. But man, you got to like, you, you got to show a little something. Your team's looking, you're the quarterback. Your team's looking for you. Like, you're allowed to rally the troops when things aren't man. going great. You don't have, like, just being stoic isn't just a thing. You can just changing it up to be more energetic to bring your guys up isn't being unauthentic, you know? Something. Like, Bob like, White is good. Good. No, no like I'm just saying, like on a like a way lesser scale. Like I've had guys that I played with that don't talk at all. It's like not that they're leaders or something like that, but as soon as they do say something, it's like, all right, that's out of character. It's like, all right, now I'm listening. You get his attention, it's like, right? It's like it's not that it's out, it's not that it's unauthentic. It's just like, oh, if now he's doing if that's something he's saying now, it's like, all right, now it's got to mean something. It's got to he's changing it up. Like he's not the same person. I so don't. So I, don't I don't look at it as unauthentic to being different. I don't think you. I don't think you can be a quarterback and and do the Chase Utley role where you lead by example or you barely say anything. And I'm not saying that's yeah. Jay, I'm not saying that's Jalen at all. No, yeah, I agree. Um, because he is respected in the locker room. He's he's a dude. These guys respect him in the locker room. But when you start losing, the last thing you need are players questioning the quarterback, and not in not just his play, questioning the quarterback and his leadership. And that's what the veterans of this team did. Like if he started acting like Russell Wilson on the sidelines, that would be unauthentic. Obviously, that would be over the top. That would be right. inorganic. But there's a whole happy medium between where he is and Russell Wilson's persona. Yeah. So so Oz says he's afraid that that they signed Jalen too early. I mean, I'm not. You when you have a player that's an MVP type candidate, he was in the Super Bowl. You sign you sign him. How bad did it hurt the Eagles to get rid of Carson Wentz and all the dead cap money and all that crap? It didn't. We're back in the Super Bowl. So if Jalen doesn't hit, man, you're not gonna you're not gonna win a Super Bowl the next couple of years. I think that's fairly obvious. But then you cut them, you move on, you incur the dead cap hit, and then whatever. So I'm they not are, worried. They aren't cutting them after one bad another bad year anyway. And by the way, he didn't have a bad year when they were no. ten and one. He had a bad ending no. of the year. He was great yeah. for that stretch there. He was MVP MVP, MVP favorite yes. at one point. Yes, he was. We forget that. And it's a, it's it, a it's a good point. But you also saw, and again, and I've been pretty clear about this, I give them the mulligan and I point the coaching staff because they had no answers. The Eagles were getting blitzed. Hertz was getting blitzed and they had no answer for it. And they kept blitzing them, kept blitzing them. And I mean, think about how bad that offense was the last Brutal. four or five games. Brutal. Brutal. And not with they major They ran 600 passes. screen passes in two years, according to me. Dude, if... <laughs> <laughs> if they if their offensive line was beat up and they just couldn't protect them, if they had major if AJ was out, if they had major injuries, I could say, okay, that's what happened. There was none of that. There was there's no excuse at all. Unless the Jalen inj- unless the Jalen injury was way worse than we thought it was. But I don't even like and again, being fair, he was uneasy in the pocket. He was not stepping up in the pocket. He was not maneuvering around in the pocket. He threw with with no confidence. And he wasn't able or willing and probably able because of the injury to go out and make the splash plays. 
which you could definitely tell he didn't want to. He didn't want to do any of that. You could tell. No, him. but he was but, like lolly. Not I don't want to say lolly gang because it sounds like he's being lazy. But like he was very like nonchalantly going out of bounds a lot. Yeah, he was, and he he may keep doing that because he's decided he's not going to take the extra contact because they need him on the field. But then he needs to be a better player inside the pocket. As he gets older, he's not going to have the same splash plays. But I remember the last half of 2022 in the playoffs in the Super Bowl, he was beating teams from the pocket. The oh, other yeah. stuff, the extracurricular stuff, is what made him the MVP candidate. He was he was he showed so much growth as a passer inside the pocket. I I mean he was great, and that that was all lost last year. And I got to give it I got to give him a mulligan, and I got to point it to the coaches because they really sucked last year. Yeah, because I don't think it was a a total, oh, defense has got him figured out type thing where all of a sudden he they have him pegged, they figured him out, and he's not going to be a good quarterback anymore. I think it was a terrible offense. I think it was the slight injury part. And, you know, he like you said, he started lacking confidence towards the end of the year. And that yeah. definitely takes a toll on you. I don't believe that he was told, stop running, we paid you. Because if you remember, even after the contract in spring training, or in spring training, in training camp, <laughs> They were talking about what makes Jalen special are these runs. They weren't talking about he doesn't need to make those plays. They wanted they were they were calling runs for him. If you remember in the last couple of games when the offense sucked, the, they, they were designing runs. The stupid tush push was their offense last year. I don't believe that for a second. Did Jalen maybe make a conscious decision that he wasn't going to run as much? Let's keep this in mind. He was injured at the end of the previous two years where he missed games. Yep. And as a as a quarterback in his development, even even the quarterbacks that are able to run, if you look at Donovan, Donovan ran a lot less as he got older. And I think it's a natural progression for you to run less if you're a Jalen Hurts or a Donovan McNabb or a quarterback that runs like that. It's only natural. I would tell Jalen to stop running or to run less or not to take the contact. I because you need him out there. You got to be able to win as a quarterback throwing the ball. And Jalen had showed in 2022 he could do that. I, I feel I feel like most of those in most of those situations, it's always the coaching staff telling the player not to run. The player wants to run, I, especially and even if they got, especially even after they got paid, they have nothing to lose. But like, their most of their money is guaranteed at that point, right? So it, if they want to just win, they're going to want to run the ball. If their coaches are putting the reins on them, that's on them. Mm. All right. Well, again, blah 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 with Jalen Hurts, but it does. It's <laughs> uh oh. Short-handed. Well, who's this bum they have in goalie? He's good. He's all right. He's a Who rookie. Is well, Sam Erson. Well, isn't that he's a rookie? Isn't that – did Tortore Tortorella apologize because he, he – Oh, no, that was the other one. The that other one, the right, because the other one was – Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a game, man. Back and forth. 31 shots for the Flyers. Yeah, what? they had 15 in the first period. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they, that's a penalty. Been... You got to throw that. He's not connecting down. Oh man, most flyers I've talked to in a decade combined. Short-handed, Steve. Brutal. All right, there you go. Brutal. Um, all right, a couple more things, and so we're gonna get to the to the rule changes in the NFL. Another. Oh I'm I'm so tired of the rule changes. So you don't you don't like the cook? All right, but just hang on a second. We'll get to it. So they're playing on Christmas again this year. Yeah, but Christmas <laughs> is on a Wednesday. It's not on a Sunday or a Monday. So the NFL said, whatever, we're gonna play on Christmas. Because, and you can do it, you can schedule it where teams have buys or whatever to where they can play on a Wednesday. I love it. I, Dude, they I, just should play every day of the week at this point. Well, if you let them, they would. But they had said that they're not going to, like, we're not going to be, we're not going to play on Wednesdays because there was always the talk about, well, you're, you're going to have like a Wednesday night game or something like that. Like, oh, we won't do that. It makes sense for Christmas. You, you know what, what this has done to the NBA? And by the way, I have very little oh, interest yeah. in watching the NBA on Christmas anyway. I agree. Right. Like I, I don't like wake up and the, like kids hurry up and open the presents because at noon the NBA starts. So I never really watched it. If the Sixers were on, obviously I, I had it on. Right. I had it on, but I didn't give a give a crap. But the NFL on Christmas, locked in, baby, lock it up, brother. <laughs> I can't wait. You could put the shittiest game of the week on. Yep, <laughs> and I'm ready for it. Yep, hundred percent. <laughs> It's like we say, like you hear people complain about, oh, it's like oversaturated. And then it's like, all right, but when it's on, you're going to watch. Both things can be true. It can be oversaturated and too much, yep. and I'm still going to watch it. Yep. I'm still going to be a degenerate locked in on whoever it is. Yep. 
What, what would you rather be doing? Watching football or just like, you know, watching having football. bullshit, small, small talk about whatever nonsense that's going on. No, watching football. Yeah. Cause I can do the, I can do the bullshit talk and watch a football game. It makes and the have, bullshit talk better and have some prop bets and have some fantasy yep. players that are playing in the game and everything else. I love it. It's great. Kamara scoring six touchdown for me on Christmas. The one year was my, one of my favorite fantasy moments ever. Is that right? Yep. Six it, was good, it was a good day. It was a good day. Well, salute to you, NFL, for having a Christmas Day game, even if it's on a Wednesday. And then I guess the two following year. Two of them. Oh, that's right. There are two of them. That's it. Because the first story I saw just had said a game and then it's a doubleheader. That's awesome. Yep. No, I would, but I also wouldn't want my. I don't, I don't want my team doing it. Was that Couturier? Oh, this is wild. What? Oh, no, that's not Couturier. That's 74. Tip it. Owen Tippett. Oh, man. I, really gotta, I, I was going to wear my TV Owen Tippett jersey tonight. I got to get the TV in front of me. This looking off to the right thing is uh, killing That's me. That's all right. It, it's, uh, <laughs> people enjoy it. Oh, look, at, look at this breakaway. Oh, it's a little mini breakaway. Oh, what a goal. What oh, a he goal. hit him. Wasn't offside. Was oh! Was that off the post and off his back? Oh, man. Is that uh, was yes, that Mike was. Richter? Is Mike Richter in net for the Rangers? <laughs> yeah. Not, all, right. all right. So, all right. Delco Steve, NFL rule changes. And we'll get to we'll get to the, the kickoff one, but just some other ones here before we do it. Um the, the hip drop tackle. I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about that. That's gonna be brutal. That's gonna be yeah, brutal. it's gonna be a lot of flags that people aren't gonna like seeing because what they actually want what they actually want to stop should be stopped, but it's very difficult to officiate. Yes. Well, Dude, like the initial, if that's the initial contact, I'm all for it. But when you get a guy that actually gets a clean rap and the guy keeps yeah, what are you supposed and to do? take him down right. and the dude keeps running, you're going to end up on his legs. It's, what are you supposed and to that's, do? And they're going to call that every time and you're just going to make everyone lose it. It's different. It's, it's difficult to officiate, but you know how, you know what the NFL tells these refs? If, when in doubt, throw the flag. Yep. With, with roughing the passer, when in doubt, throw the flag. So that's there. Uh, so get ready to complain about the officials. The trade deadline pushed back one week. Now it's after week nine. And, and let me say this, that again, the NFL knows what they're doing. Because why wouldn't you want additional time for teams to say like, hey, actually, I would like to make a trade. And it's so much less in, in football. It They've made it a thing. It's not like Major League Baseball trade deadline, but they've made it a thing in the NFL to where if you're a, a football fan, you're looking to see if your team will do something, especially because Howie's usually very active at the trade deadline. And I've been saying this for, for a long time, since I've been working in sports radio. Major League Baseball should push back their trade deadline to September it's so 1st. It's so early. It's so early. To September 1st. Why? Why? Why wouldn't you? And get rid of the, the whatever the secondary trade market is. Well, they, with the they don't waiver. they don't allow the waiver stuff anymore. That that's oh that's gone. You're not Good. allowed to you're not allowed to do the waiver trades where you're making trades anyway. No, you're not allowed to. Just just put the even if you move it halfway halfway in August, but put it at the end of August. It yeah, there's too much season allow, left. There's but it allow it allows to it it more people more action will be involved. I'm just telling 100%. you, more action will be involved. So I I always I, I always say that like man, if you want. Because the counter argument to that is July 31st, there's more teams that are still involved, but it hasn't been a great trade deadline in the last couple of years. Well, there's a lot of teams that don't think they're out of it yet. So why would they start selling like, off pieces that early into the season? Last year, the Cubs, they they tried to sell at the deadline. They didn't. I just don't think there was enough. They were getting enough. And then they, they got, got back in the race. So they, they made a, might have made a major move. And teams that were in it now maybe fall out and they're willing to make a trade. So it works both exactly. ways. So trade deadline pushed back. You can also you have an additional challenge. If you get a successful challenge, you get a, a third challenge or whatever. I think you should just have as many challenges as you want. I mean, it's not, it's not the coach's fault if uh, if teams you know if teams screw up or well, the refs screw did up. We, did we talk about that with the overhead official? Like it's about yeah. time they just put an overhead official in. Just like plain as day, clear and obvious calls. Hey, dude. You missed that, like you missed that PI, or that wasn't a PI. Problem solved, done. What's going on? Get rid of challenges. Just make sure the obvious calls are corrected. Right. Yeah. There's, Mike Florio. There's too much. There's too much wagering and money going around now that these games are called on that you got to get right. No, that's a great point. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, has been calling it. He's been calling for the Sky Judge for at least yes. the last five years. 
where you have an official, maybe a senior official, someone that doesn't want to work on the field anymore, up in the booth watching the game real time. And if something's hinky, or like it's just like, whoa, 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 like, no, 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 like, hang on a second. You just signal down, you're in constant communication with the field. You signal down, hang on a second, I'm taking, and you're looking at it in real time. So by the time, like, they huddle up for a second. You can already have looked at it. They can be in communication with New York to make sure that there's cross-checking and everything else. But, like, it really wouldn't slow the game down at no. all. It would make at the game all. so much faster. It would make it faster. It would and make be- it faster. And a better make it better. Make it better. I, mean, how many, I know the NFL also doesn't want, if it's a, a roughing the passer, they don't want it because, like, all right, is it roughing the passers and not roughing the passer? It's not like when a player steps out of bounds where you can actually see his foot's on the line. You know, it's a judgment call. But I think we all know when you're watching a game, it's third third and 15 in the fourth quarter, and they throw the flag on a on a roughing the passer, and it's like, that's bullshit. You don't make that call right there. And, like, those things need to be cleaned up. Those type yeah, of plays that affect games need to be cleaned up. Yeah, like, don't give me the roughing the passer where the guy's hand, like, you're going up to block the pass, and his hand comes down and hits him on the head. It's like open hand, not a fist, nothing like that. Up, oh, roughing the passer, you can touch his head. It's right. I'm like, right. So if I threw a cotton ball and I hit him in the head, like that's roughing the passer. Like, come on. If the technology is there, why wouldn't you use it? Exactly. We're 2024, man. You can have angles from from everywhere. Well, I mean, did you on. see the did you see the one with the the play clock? That they're gonna they can they on. can review to see if well no it's a game clock. That's I don't what think I mean. it's the I don't think it's the play clock. So yeah, if, so. Yeah. It's the game clock. If you uh, can re- I misread that, then if I'm that's pretty sure it. that's what it is. You say I just assumed play clock is like why would I care about this? I think it's the game clock because if there's like if time expires on a quarter or a game, maybe it's just the end of the game or the end of the half. It might be end of the half actually. Then you're able to review that to see whether or not they got a playoff or not. I don't think it's. The uh, I got you. That would make more sense. But they miss the play clock all the time too, where yeah. it should be. But at well, least. The buzzer thing we were talking about last week, just put a freaking buzzer thing on their hip, and if it buzzes before the snap goes off, flag, flag. whistle, flag, yep. It's so easy. It's so easy. It is. These guys, they make millions and millions, or the guys that make these decisions get make millions and millions, and the NFL makes billions, and they can't just make a $10 solution. I mean, you should email Roger Goodell, rgoodell at nfl.com. There you go. They get another, give up another goal? They, man, they got to go goalie, dude. Who is this bum? This is, dude, he just stood on his head for two periods and now this is. Well, this he just is fell. Asinine. Yeah, it's just asinine. <laughs> All well. right, five, five, four Rangers, six minutes to go here. Uh, all right, so the the big rule change everybody's talking about is the kickoffs, um, which I, I guess you don't like it or whatever, but the design is. I just to, think it looks janky. It's to increase the number of kickoffs returns per game and still making it safe. Because one of the reasons why they were in effect, trying to eliminate the kickoff is my former partner, right? Grease was a gunner on the kickoff team where he would start at the 35 yard line and run as fast as he could down to the other end and try to t- try to kill somebody. You know what I mean? Like, like helmet, the like, boom, you're like a missile and concussions were huge at that guys were injured. So really that's what they wanted to do. But what they realized was they essentially eliminated it, which, which hasn't been good for football. So, um, there were there was in 2698 kickoffs last season 1970 were touchbacks so only 21.8% of kickoffs were returned 2003 so 20 years earlier what do you think the percentage rate of kickoff returns were so again 21.8 total, total flip flop 88.7 okay. ooh 88.7 rate of kickoffs returned 20 years ago. All right. So here's here's what they've done. So kicker, so the, the the special teams players line up five yards apart from each other on the receiving team's 40 and 35 yard line. They wait until a kick lands or is touched by one of the two returners. Then they can go. All right. Kickers kick off from their own 35. And the receiving team has nine players lined up in the setup zone. And then two returners. No players can move until the ball's received by a returner, except for the kicker and, and the returner. Uh, returners can return the football wherever it lands. A touchback at the 20-yard line 
would occur if the ball touches the ground or a player in the landing zone rolls beyond the goal line and down in the end zone. So you get it at the 20. A touchback could occur at the 30 if the ball goes out of bounds behind the receiving team's goal line, if it hits the goal post, or it uh, gets down in the end zone. So what they're trying to do is they're just trying to make the return more viable. So you can't kick it out of the end zone or you're giving them the ball. It was, is it at the 40? Yeah. So if you kick it out of the end zone, they get the ball at the 40 yard line. Yeah. They're trying to make it. So you kick it into the little return zone. So you have to return it and you don't like it. I I don't know. I just don't, I think it's, I don't know. It's like Fugazi, I guess it's, I don't know. It's, 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 I don't know. It feels like something you would find in like an eighth grade. Eight in the XFL? Because they got it from the XFL. We actually, do you have, the, do you have yeah. the video? Yeah. This is this is Adam Schefter's Twitter. Here's uh, here's how it will look. Yeah, uh, there's no sound to this. So. No, it's okay. The XFL has been doing this. So here's how it looks. Uh, so see how they're there? Boom. Return. And now it's more like football. Where he just has a little bit of a head start. <laughs> So you can make plays off of that and whatnot. Yeah. So I, I it, it would be entertaining. It's just, I just think it's going to look janky. Are you kidding me? Jesus. <laughs> they scored. We scored again. I knew they were going <laughs> to score. The organization five to oh five. God. John Tortorella. It is return to the garden. Oh my God. This is excruciating. All right. Well, there you go. What buddy. a bounce. What a bounce. Oh man. The flyers. Oh, they're they're really grinding tonight. This is, this is torture. So we haven't we haven't not given up a point to the Rangers in ten straight games. Or, oh, is that, they're nine zero and one nine zero and one in the last ten against us. That's great Flyers knowledge, man. That's why you're Delco yeah, Steve. It was, on, it was on the pregame. Oh, it was. <laughs> there you go. I actually saw somebody in the grocery store today with a Flyers shirt on, and I can't tell you the last time I saw anybody. Now I also where I live, it's probably not Flyers country like it is. In Delaware Del- County. Delco is a big flyer area. Right, exactly. Not so many Flyers fans up here. Maybe when you get into Limerick, maybe some more Flyers fans, but you know. Probably got Penguins fans rolling around up there. Actually, Rick might be watching right right now. He's from the Pittsburgh area. And yeah, he's a Pens fan. Do. There you go. Uh so here's here's why here's here's a here's a, a, a hidden silver li- not a silver lining, but something that that I, I saw a couple of people write about. I think this makes not only it, i think everybody agrees it makes the kickoff more valuable i think this puts higher caliber players back at the kickoff because why yeah. would Ty, why would tyree kill want to return a kickoff if he knows that special teams linebackers coming down there he's going to try to take his head off you're not going to have the same the, the same type of hits you're not going to have the same high velocity hits and honestly this is this is like a real game thing except you're giving him 10 yards of space to work with to try to juke his way through. I'll give you that. That that'll make the this more enticing to me and more interested in it happening. I just thought it was just weird looking. Oh, that's my. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, it's for a league that's so st- starch on keeping things traditional and whatever. And this is, seems way out of the box. No, they always they're always messing around with stuff, dude. That's what I know they are, but they're still not. You know, I don't know. Well, they use it. They do use a. a They're not changing the game drastically. Usually, this is this is a huge. This is a huge changeup. It is. No, it totally changes the game. Is it what's it? Is it two designated onside kicks a game too now? Yeah, that you can, and yet only in the fourth quarter when you're trailing. Uh, so yeah, but also, so who returns for the Eagles? Who's the Eagles kickoff (laughs) returner? Knowing knowing what they have, I was gonna say, are they are we actually gonna get a returner, or are we just gonna use? Are we going to go with the dynamic that Ty, like a Tyree Kill type player is going to do it? I don't know. I'm uh, not sure. There we go. Dude, Saquon could be a be a beast at this. Yeah, I, I, I don't need to put him out there. <laughs> could be really good at it though. No, oh, no doubt. That's what I'm trying to think. Who do they have? Would you put Devontae out there? I wouldn't put the, Devontae Parker. No, Devontae Smith. <laughs> He's the first person that comes to mind. Well, honestly, a, AJ's not really shifty. A lot of times run somebody over. So I, I know. So on punt returns, you like the shifty guy, and kickoff returns, you like the guy that wants to just hit the whole heart boom. But now this has totally changed that. So would AJ be a good I think Smitty would, I think Smitty would be better than AJ. Agreed. Because he's still got the straight, like they both have straight line speed, obviously, but like you said, Smitty's more uh more shifty. Do they draft a backup? Because Saquon Barkley isn't coming off the field a lot, or at least he probably shouldn't. I'll bet you a thousand dollars Kenny Gamewell returns the first kick of the year. 
Anybody but him. <laughs> it's good. They're going to be like, oh, he's our primary kick returner now that we have Saquon. Like, we want to get the ball in his hands as often as we can in any facet that we can. Boston Scott? No. Can be the returner? No. He's- no. Get him out of here. I'm so tired of Boston Scott being on this team. Jeremy Bloom is available if the, if the Eagles wanted to re-sign him. Who was, don't, who was the guy that we got? The, the, the little white receiver? The hurdler? Uh, Devin Allen? Yes. <laughs> he was on the practice squad. Okay, will he make the team as the returner this year? He he'll probably be practice squad guy, but he's straight line speed as well. I I feel like I feel like you need a a guy that can juke and make guys miss, or can really not only they speed, but they can cut and they can keep going. You know what I mean? Like that's why I think AJ could work. I just don't know if you need to put him out there and, and risk injuries. But yeah, they can do a couple different up. guys. He's not the guy I'm willing to risk the injury though, AJ. All right, well there you go. Kenny, uh, it's going to be Kenny Gamel. They're, they're, not, they're not, they're not going to draft anyone. It's going to be Kenny Gamel. So Kenny G is going to be back with a prominent role in the team. Probably. They love him. He, they like, they like them better than Swift. It's not like they're cutting him. No, no, he's well, no, because he's, he's still on a rookie salary. not making any yep. money. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, there's two minutes left to go in the game and the Flyers and the Rangers. Could they be headed for overtime? We will find out. As Delco Steve is, uh, is, I can see him. I can see the heart palpitations through his flyer sweater. There you go. Yeah, uh, we're only at 75 beats per minute. It's not too bad at the moment. All right. So I saw a, uh, is that what you are right now? 75? Yep. 75. Uh, almost the goal, but whoever that grumpy goaltender for the Rangers is, you shove them to the ground. Let me see here. Beats per minute. There's 109 beats per minute. So I'm excited. All right. So Mike Tannenbaum, do you, do you ever, do you watch ESPN in the morning? I know he's a Tannenbaum's like a big morning sports center. Get up those type of shows. No, I'm usually out of the house by that. Yeah. Or or you're usually not watching it. I, yeah. (laughs) I mean, he's, he's fine. Tannenbaum used to run uh, the jets and then the dolphins. And he's, he was running the Dolphins when the Eagles were able to make that trade. They were able to get up and get Carson Wentz. And a lot of that was they were able to, to trade with uh, Miami to get up to eight. Who they said? They sent Kiko Alonso and somebody else down there. Was that Maxwell, Byron Maxwell? Yeah. So yep. like, Tannenbaom and Howie had a really good relationship. They had a, like a really good personal relationship. So that's like, you know, you make deals with people that you know and ha- how he conned them into that trade. But anyway, he comes out with a – he has a mock draft. And – so he has a he has a trade in the mock draft. So he goes Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, uh, JJ McCarthy. So he's got McCarthy going there. What was the the big trade that he had? Yeah. And he has Marvin Harrison going ninth to the Bears. That would be a coup for the Bears. In no way. Nine. Well, I mean, listen, crazier things have happened. It has the Giants taken Malik Neighbors, who some people think is the it- best. It really doesn't take much for that to happen, though. For no, you're for, right. For Harrison to fall to nine, I don't. Believe I think so. I think someone would trade up for him before that happens. But yeah, I think you get the, I, you get two offensive linemen drafted in there, and you someone takes neighbors over him, he could easily drop the nine. First eight picks, you're going to get four quarterbacks and three receivers. Is what my yeah, prediction is. So I would I, agree with that. But you know, he's doing something different here. So the, teams are going to trade up to get those receivers, right? So the the trade that because he has he has them drafted number four. So the Vikings what? trade up. The the Vikings get yeah, Kyler the, get Kyler. Yeah, the Murray. Vikings don't trade up. That that's just that's just a straight trade. Cardinals get eleven. Vikings yeah, get Kyler Murray and number sixty six. So so the Cardinals stay at four and they take JJ McCarthy. They trade Kyler Murray for a first and a third, or is it just a first? So so Kyler Murray and a yeah. third, and oh, yeah, the Cardinals Kyler get Murray the eleventh. I'm sure that you know what I'm sure they would love to do that. I'm sure they'd love to get rid of Kyler. Arizona would love Arizona would love would to get love rid of Kyler Murray. And he's I think he's still a talented quarterback. And I if I, I if I was a team out there that needed a quarterback, I would I'd I'd have interest in getting him. But yeah, you know, like it, he's it, still it, young. It's, he's still young and he's really he's dynamic. He, he's he's got 27 at the start of, at the start of the season. He's also a dick. You know what I mean? Like that's I loves I, video games. Yeah, the the just everything that I hear coming out of Arizona is that you know, everything that you hear is kind of true. 
it doesn't make me to mean he's a bad guy or anything like that. But when you're the quarterback, as we were talking about with Jalen Hurts, you need you need to cl- you need to click with your team, right? Like guys need to need to you need to lead them. He didn't seem like that guy, but you know, like you had said, he's young, and there's no reason why if I'm Minnesota, yeah, like I I would I'd be interested in him, but. We'll see. Oh. That's it. That interesting little mock mock trade that he had there. I'd be willing to bet that he gets less than fifty percent of his picks right. Oh no, he's because yeah, you know this what he's is doing brutal. Here. Yeah, because he ha- he has his Brock Bowers going twenty two to the Eagles, which would be awesome. I'm not gonna lie, but there's no way. There, I don't think there's any way. And I, I if if Brock Bowers is on the board at twenty two, I would run to the podium. So run. you would draft him. Yeah, he's easy, he'd easily be the best player available at that point in time. Oh, for sure. Like, and it, if he's head, I'm I'm not always a best player available, but when the guy's head and shoulders the best player available, you take him. Well, it's also then 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 you cut then you can move away from Dallas Goddard. Yeah, in a year or two, whatever. Yeah, you whatever don't have his, to rush, you don't well, have he, to rush Bowers along. He's gonna oh, dude, he's got to he's got to be. See, that's the problem is you have to you can't. You can't like so. You've been out after this year with Dallas Goddard, so it would make a lot of sense because his he's got one more year left on the contract after twenty twenty four, and it's a le- it's a eleven million dollar cap hit, almost twelve million dollar cap hit. So if Goddard's going to get a new contract, it's going to be after twenty twenty four, or it's going to be it's going to be before the end of the season. Correct. So if they were if they were to draft Bowers, then they would move on from Dallas Goddard. Yeah, you probably trade him next. You probably trade him next off season. Yeah, yeah, they need. Getting- You'd probably get a second or a third for him anyway. Yeah, you that's a they're going offensive line. Oh god, that'd be that would be all right. If Bowers is on the board and they go offensive line, I riot. That's a hundred percent. I I I don't know what they would do. It would depend on what they thought of the lineman there. I just don't know. He's how- a, he's an all-around tight end. He's he's not like he's a, just a receiving tight end. He could help in the blocking game. And they like running two tight end sets anyway. They do. No, you're right. And they don't have a second tight end. Hence why they right. haven't gotten a third receiver in God knows how long because they love the two tight end sets. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'd be shocked. I love, God- I love Goddard, but uh, Bowers is uh, pretty freaking talented. Yeah, all right. So the AJ needs his targets. Devontae needs his targets. Saquon Barkley now needs targets. Now you're going to have two Pro Bowl caliber tight ends that need targets as well. But Well, just for the season. And, you know, not all rookie tight ends come out like Laporta or, you know. Yeah, you're right. So they need they need some time. Well, that would be that would be an awesome problem to have. Correct. Uh, yeah, but yeah, this is a this Fugazi uh, Mike Tannenbaum the, mock. So whatever. He had uh, a Dunze going fourteen. <laughs> yeah. If Dunze's at fourteen, you trade up the fourteen to get him. They might. But they might. He he's got that like nastiness to him. Like he's like a Heinz Ward. I'm gonna oh, yeah, for sure. Out type receiver. Oh yeah, probably more ta- with more talent. Yeah, I, 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 another wide receiver. Yeah, why not? Just what That's you true. need. But I again, would take anything besides what they normally do. Yeah, I don't disagree. All right, so um, are you? Are you? So let me ask you a question. I actually texted my wife this earlier because the 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 That's beat, is it? Yep. Oh. 41 shots? Yep. Who is this? Yep. That's not even a good shot. Who is, who is this tomato cannon goal? <laughs> Get this guy out of here. This is their goalie? Well, their other goalie's got some other issues, so. Well, yeah, yeah I, heard, I, I know. I heard about that. <laughs> God. Uh, so I don't need to worry about the Flyers in the playoffs this year. Probably. That was a hell of a game, though. Oh, my God. Give the organization credit. Well, they got a point, right? I got a point. Ah, it's Fugazi point. Too. I got a point. Fugazi point. Whatever. On Aww. to the next. On Come to on. the next. They got an easy stretch coming up. They got it. They got to get. They got to turn it on then. Okay. But tomato can. That's a great uh, insult there by you. I, I'm. I'm. I. Steve's got me into the Flyers here. That's all I need is somebody. Somebody that cares about the Flyers. I just. I never. I have nobody in my life that watches the Flyers. So why would I care about it? You know what I mean. <laughs> There you go. All right. So, have you ever seen the movie Beetlejuice? No. Uh, when you said that to me this morning, I was or earlier, I was just like, "Oh Christ!" <laughs> All I know is you don't. What you don't say his name three times in a row? 
or he appears. So I don't even want to. It, it's I, I texted my wife before we went on. So I'm like, have you seen Beetlejuice? The original Beetlejuice? Because it's late 80s. Is it 89, 88, 89, something like that? And she gave me the. It was 88, I believe. And eight, the yeah. first thing you sent me. So yeah, it's 40 years ago. It was something like that. <laughs> Yeah. Like that many years ago, it said the article you sent me. It said almost forty years later. Well, thirty-five. I swear to God, thirty-five. I, I know. I don't. So, so uh, I, you won't send it to me. I can't even go back and double check it. You're sabotaging me. Oh, because because I, I I I found the um I found the actual trailer, but no, it was nineteen eighty eight. So it's it's thirty five. Yeah. So I asked my wife, did you see it? And she gave me the like she thinks so. So like I don't even think she's seen it or she has no idea what it's about. I'm wondering if I watch it today. So I think we're going to watch, we're going to watch it now because I love the movie. It had a great soundtrack too. It's a Tim Burton movie, it had a great soundtrack. Uh, so I wonder if it's, if it holds up, if you watch it today, but uh, I'm going to say, I highly doubt it. I don't dude. I don't know. It, it wasn't, it's not like roadhouse where it's can't be 1988. This was a, Kind of like a, a a cult classic. It's not a horror movie, but it's I don't I don't know how to describe it. It's it's horror weird. comedy. Yeah, it's weird, but it's very well done. Gina Davis, a uh, young Alec Baldwin. Uh, what's her name? The um, what the hell is her name? Uh, Winona Ryder was in. It. I mean, you had you had big star power, but it was before they were really they were really that you know they were big stars. Uh, but it was good. So here's the trailer to the new one. Here's it's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and um, yeah. So here's the uh, here's the trailer to it. If anybody's seen it, there it is. I think they were in Vermont in the original. So she's in some other sh- some other Tim Burton show. Wednesday. Wednesday. It's the- Wednesday. Uh, from the The juice is loose. As Michael Keaton, of course, returns as Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton's got to be 70 years old, isn't he? That's it. What did people do before Google? Uh, Encyclopedias? 72. Damn, he's 72. Man. Um, yeah. So you're not going to be going to check out Beetlejuice Fall 2024? Nope. Uh, definitely not be there. I'm not a big horror movie guy. But it's not really a horror. It, like, it's not, it's not, not really like a horror any, movie. Yeah, but like, like the screams, like you know, like all those. Like, no, they don't do it for me. So Winona Ryder is in it. Um, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think there's men. I think there might be some cameos. Yeah. So Catherine O'Hara, who played, um, not the played Winona Ryder's mother, or she was one of the female characters in it. I forget exactly because Winona Ryder was not. The couple's daughter she just came over uh anyway i i love the movie so i'll be curious to see if it's actually uh still good so you gotta boy well, you gotta watch it again before you go see the second one yep yeah well i might, might watch it uh this weekend or whatever which is weird I, um again if you didn't hear me say it a couple days ago won't be here thursday or friday i'm going to baltimore we're going to the aquarium leaving thursday oh, baltimore morning is awesome it is yeah, so the first thing I see when I wake up is the that bridge. I'm like, holy crap, man. I'm going to Baltimore oh, this weekend. Didn't even think about that. Yeah, but I don't think it, it's not going to affect the, the drive. But anyway. Well, it'll affect traffic everywhere else. Yeah, most likely. All right, so there's an, another sequel coming out. And this is... Th- this, Way this in is, on this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is from the Today Show. So this is... Um, oh, we can just play the, just play the whole thing. So here is the... Um, Here's the. This is from Carson Daly on the Today Show with a uh, sequel that a lot of people are going to be interested in listening or watch. 
Adam Sandler, is the comedian gearing up to take another swing at this fan favorite role? Tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. Uh, wow. A recent interview like on a local Cleveland way. sports yeah, radio show, Happy Gilmore star Christopher McDonald, a.k.a. Shooter McGavin, revealed that plans <laughs> for a sequel are in the works. Okay. I saw Adam about two weeks ago, and he says, McDonald, you're going to love this. I said, what? How about that? He takes some shows in the first draft of Happy Gilmore 2. Oh, I said, am I... Yeah, so, but, you know, I guess um, maybe you should cut that out because I, I don't want to be a liar, but uh, no. he did show me that, and I thought, well, that would be awesome. Okay. Hey, I'm surprised I'm surprised not taking this out. Out. All right, whatever. So, like, Sa like, Sandler had no comment. Nobody has any comment about it. So, why wouldn't you at this point? I, tell, like, Adam I need Paige Spranick in that movie. What's that? I need Paige Spranick in that movie. Oh, yeah. I'm sure she'd make a cameo. Supposedly it's going to be for Netflix, at least what I was reading when they do it. It's not a production or anything like that. So I, I can't imagine it would take a I don't know if you've seen any of the Adam Sandler Netflix movies. I've been meaning to watch the basketball one. I haven't uh, got well, around to it. That's though. not a net. Like, uh, is that a Netflix one? Pretty sure. It I, don't, is. I don't even know. I didn't see it either. And I, I don't plan on it. Uh, but he did a couple of romantic comedies. I think he signed up for Netflix for a bunch of films and they probably filmed it over a weekend. That's how bad it is. And his <laughs> wife's in it, who's not necessarily a great actor or actress. But they're they're just, they're bad. At, Adam Sandler's made so many bad movies. I know people are going to revolt. I mean, he hasn't made good movies since since back then. I could, this basketball movie is like critically acclaimed, so I don't want to totally rip them. But Happy Gil, ha, Happy Gil, is Happy Gilmore the best? Or is Billy Madison? Normally it's Happy Gilmore Ooh. and Billy Madison. My favorite golf movie is uh, Tin Cup. So... Oh, you're going Adam Sandler movie? Yeah, no, um, like Tin Cup's a great movie. Um, Adam Sandler movie. Uh, I would go Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison. Agreed, me too. There's some good. There's there's some iconic lines though in Billy Madison that are just like, oh, Billy Madison like, has has iconic lines. Um, is Billy? But Madison, I enjoy Happy Gilmore more. Waterboy was excellent, as some people are saying. So Billy Madison was Steve Buscemi with the lipstick. And he crosses him off the the list. He was gonna. He's he's like in the he's like in his parents' basement or whatever, and he's considering doing something. That was that Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore? I get a, I get him confused I, a lot. I think it was Billy Madison. Billy Madison, I'm yeah. pretty sure. It's like Black Sheep and Tommy Boy. Sometimes I get Black Sheep and Tommy Boy. I get some of the things. I never watched Tommy Boy. Oh, dude. Come ne on, never, go do never it. Never watch it. Get, never get Mrs. Delco Steve the next time you guys hang out. Don't watch The Wire. Watch Tommy Boy. I was going to say, we're locked in on The Wire, man. We got, we're still doing that. Loud. Uh, Wedding Singer's good. I'll give you that. Wedding Singer's all right. Yeah, what, it's it's. right. I'm not going to rip it. Gr grown Ups sucks. Oh, I love Grown Ups. Grown, grown Ups sucks. All these when they're looking things. at the tree and the girl in the treehouse, like, and they're all staring at the tree. It's because of your age is why you think that it's good. <laughs> if you were my age, you would say it sucks because it does. Anyway, really excited. And by the way, just a side note on this, because I actually, he was on Ken Carmen, who I know does, does mornings in, in Cleveland. And they do such a, I, I can't believe that I couldn't find this clip. I, I went to, I went to their Instagram. WIP in a second would have, a video of it. They do video. They do videos. They could very easily cut this and put it on their Instagram. You can't find it. This clip's not anywhere to be found on social media because they didn't put it out there. You you could have ten million views of this of this from this stupid interview. Him just saying that Adam Sandler showed him a script. You could have more than that. You know how many people want to see this movie happen? These idiots didn't even put it out on social media. And I actually know the program director. I should watch what I say. But I just can't. <laughs> I, I I can't. He's a, and, and and he's and he's a good he's a good program director. But like, what are you doing? You 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 could, maybe you, you should give him a heads up and you can give you a kickback. Dude, I like I this was well, this isn't new. This has been out there for a couple days, but I was literally I spent a good 10, 15 minutes, and this is where I could find it. it was on the Today Show where you had the sounds. I had I, I heard the sound. Actually, I was in Walmart, and in Walmart they do this. They have like this radio show for Walmart with this radio guy, and they have like you know they're playing like Q one hundred two music, and then they'll come in. They'll they'll put like a so they played it. I'm like, well, that's the sound to what, what I was looking for. And I heard it in a Walmart. I'm like, well, it's out there somewhere. And then I, the only place I could find it was Today Show. 
So hmm. whatever. Idiots. Idiots. Yeah, you gotta watch Tommy Boy, man. <laughs> I don't even know where to find it. Where would I even find it at this point? Any of the wait, do you, I'll, I'll search it. Netflix, Amazon Prime. Do you not have any of these things? I have them. I have them. I have them. Just I'm <laughs> not like, you know, like jumping at the chance to go watch Tommy Boy. How old is it now? 30 years old? More than that. Yeah, I'm 32. It was 94. Why I, well, like, so why do what? I care? Why do I care? It's probably trash at this point. It was probably, you guys probably think it was all awesome no. from like the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, this movie was so now, funny. Tommy Boy, I think, was 94, 95. Yep. That's what I'm saying. But like you're watching it into the late 90s and the early 2000s, you're probably still saying it's great. And now if I'm watching it from a new perspective with all the things that have come across in the last three decades, it's probably trash now. No, it's Let's not trash. It's better than any of this crap that's made today. But see, here, here's my thing, all right? And I get it. It's probably corny. I, no, I, I get it. <laughs> not corny. Campy is what you're looking for. I get it. My rock and roll is better than your rock and roll. My hip hop. I don't even call it hip hop. I call it rap. I no, that's it. not even true. I have a full on classic rock is the best rock. So All right. But like just in general. And I yeah. agree with you. Classic rock. And I like 90s alt. But yeah, yeah like... I, I, actually, you know what? I like rock. I like I like alternative music today. I like it. I, no, I like other stuff too. But if you're asking me what's rock, it's like Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. Queen, All right. Well, these movies are, these movies are better than any Adam Sandler crap that's out today. Tommy Boy is a legitimately laugh out loud. Piss yourself. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll, 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 it'll be my homework over the weekend while you're in Baltimore. Oh, uh, I mean, you don't have to. I'm just telling you. <laughs> All right. Should that we could do that on Thursday and Friday. We do a live viewing of Tommy Boy, and you guys, I can just be like, "All right, this was dumb. This is all dumb. right." So, <laughs> so with that, with, with that being said, some people have been asking because they, you know, I don't know if you've noticed this, but we've 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 got a following here. People are, are now programmed every night, nine p.m. They're waiting in for waiting in chat for the show. If we don't end up doing a show because I had something else, I'll get a lot of DMs on social media being like, "What? There's no show tonight. What? You know what the bleep?" Um. So people want to know, are you, t are you taking the two nights off like me or are you going to do a show for the people out there? Delco Steve and for me. We'll have to see if we can uh, generate enough uh, content to, uh, for me to talk to myself <laughs> for uh, two well, bring, hours. No, bring somebody on with you. All right. Well, I'll have to find somebody to do it too. That okay. I actually wanted to, I like that I actually want, I want to actually spend the two hours with. <laughs> so I could text her. What's well, an hour? No, out. You, well, you two out would be two for days. But you could do one of them if you wanted. I'm not asking you to do. I'm just. I'm just saying if if you wanted to do one or both, I certainly would like to like like that. All and right, I could we'll text see. Herb for you. No, I'm, I'm good on Herb. Like Herb, <laughs> but I would I would just turn it, let him come on, and then I'd leave, and then I'd go sit in the other room and watch a show and see if he could talk to himself for an hour. Black Ritty, what about Mrs. Delco Steve? Uh, Mrs. Delco Steve actually. Uh, her dad was watching yesterday and uh, told her that you suggested having her on, and I forgot to tell her, so I got yelled at for that. Ah, but, uh, but yeah, no, I don't think that's in her wheelhouse. No, she's not interested in that. Uh, I think she wants to keep her uh, secret identity, identity? Uh, oh, that's... for now. <laughs> understandable, certainly understandable. Well, uh, Mister or Mrs. Delco Steve's dad, thank you for uh, for watching the the broadcast. He watches next morning usually, so that's he's very. A he's a regular in the morning. <laughs> very delco of you to watch the game. watch it thank you very much also one last thing here and i didn't i didn't shout your mom out yesterday which i i should have uh but we talked so we talked about the event a lot your mom is awesome she came up gave me a big hug she gave my kids the uh the goodie bags with like listen some good stuff in there some big bubble wands which we already used some smaller bubble ones you i mean the, the kids loved it so Shout out to your mom. Uh, sh Appreciate that. At, love at, to hear that. As expected, you have a wonderful family, and yeah, uh, we got some good people in there. You certainly do. So shout out to uh, to Mrs. D to Mrs. Gallo out there. It was uh, <laughs> Katie's cigarettes. <laughs> what? <laughs> candy cigarettes? <laughs> no, we were not handing out candy cigarettes, even though they were a staple when I was a kid down the shore. They were great. Well, what's <laughs> It's just a stick of sugar. <laughs> right. But it's a cigarette and you don't want to promote with, cigarettes, but kids don't even know what cigarettes color, are with, anymore. With a red colored tip at the end. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it did have the red color tip. There was a place in in Abington, right on Old York Road. It was called the Cookie Outlet. Independent. I think maybe there's a, like one other cookie outlet. And you'd go in there and they had every freaking candy and cookie you could ever imagine. It was across the street from a 7-Eleven. It's actually, I don't even know what's there now. But um, yeah, so like I would, that's where you get the candy cigarettes. You'd go in there and then and you pretend to smoke them. Because back then, how many people... <laughs> How many people in the 80s and 90s used to smoke? More people than didn't use didn't smoke, I think. Oh, definitely. Oh. It's like I remember being a kid and like you think about it, you see it all, you saw it all the time, and now you rarely see it. I'm just gonna go the year of Tommy Boy, 1995. Percentage of people <laughs> that smoked in 1995. 24 uh, 24. 24.7%. I was gonna say like 30 was gonna be my guess. Dude, they had a, the, they had a they had a you could smoke in the malls. You can smoke in the, the food court. Can you imagine being in a mall and someone's people are smoking cigarettes in the mall? <laughs> you smell weed in the mall a lot now, or, or people are vaping. But yeah, uh, we had a trailer down the shore and the little like you know convenience store that was in the like campground. My sister and I would like ride our bikes up there and we'd buy all the candy cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, man, they were delicious. Yeah, but we, definitely smoked, can... we definitely pretended to smoke them, so it was. Kind of stupid. It's hard to find it. Uh, I'm surprised they still make them. If they still make them, I'm surprised. They definitely still make them. I don't know. I don't know who's who's buying them or where they're selling them. Let me see. Candy cigarettes. This could be our thing. Let me see. Oh, if, they, they, if they have candy cigarettes, send them. We got to get some. Amazon. Absolutely. Mm. Lucky lights candy. <laughs> Lucky lights for a, for a, a case. They're only thirteen bucks. 4.4 reviews. Is that the horseshoe on the front of it? Yep. Yep. So there's Stallion, Roundup, Lucky Lights. Yeah, that's the three right there. Original recipe as well. I, I always went for the one with the horseshoe. You like the horseshoe one? Well, that kind of fits yep. your personality as well. You're a, a rough, rugged <laughs> kind of guy. Uh, here we go. 59 cents. It's the same ones. Oh, and you have a, there's one that says candy on it. And I can't see what it says underneath it, but it looks like Paul Malls. It's like an imitation Paul Mall box, <laughs> that dark red box. How many people do you think ended up smoking cigarettes because they were like, oh, candy cigarettes? They're like, oh, I'll try the real thing now. <laughs> Enough where you shouldn't have had them. <laughs> oh, look at these ones. Bubblegum cigarettes. Yeah, they're aren't they like the bigger ones? They look like cigars more like. No, these actually have they even have the filter, the fake <laughs> filter, the brown fake filter. There used to be like the cigars that were like, you know, and they were just a like the Swiss, like the Swisher, the Swisher sweets or the, um, what are the, the Middletons had it? The Phillies owners had it. The, um, what do you call it? Black and Miles. Black and Miles. No, I don't know. All right, whatever. You get a nice wine wood tip, Black and Mild. Yeah. So fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I went through a phase where, where I was like, where I would get banged up and I'd be like, yeah, let's stop and get a black and mild at the, at the seven 11 an apple one. But it's been many apple? years. Since I've yeah. I don't oh. know why. Ew. That doesn't yeah. no, I'm out on that. Yeah. I don't know why, but you know, that's probably 15 years ago or whatever. All right. Uh, everybody like follow subscribe comment. There we go. We got it. Love it. All four. <laughs> boom. Got boom. Em. Boom. <laughs> Uh, at John Marks Media, uh, it, don't even bother following Delco Steve on Twitter, but his Instagram, if you want to see him, uh, benching and squatting, S Gallo 33, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I didn't get any uh, bachelor party content out there because we didn't do anything besides scream at college basketball. Yeah, but, but you didn't even go out, nope. So they went boring? out, they went out, the, they went out the next night. No, it was a good time, but we didn't. I was like, it was literally just bros sitting around screaming at the JMU Wisconsin game. Yeah, we all we right. all bet on JMU together, so that was that was the only uh, tidbit. So, but yeah, I felt bad. I didn't get anything out for you guys, but you guys didn't miss anything. Good. All right. Well, whatever. <laughs> no go, shenanigans. Go, go get some uh, go get some content for us or something. All right, we'll be back tomorrow night, nine p.m. live. Uh, make sure you subscribe and listen. If you miss episodes, they're available on YouTube right after we're done. So you can watch something a couple months ago. You can watch something the morning after, like uh, like Mrs. Delco Steve's dad. And we thank him for that. So talk to you at 9 p.m. Wednesday. See ya. <laughs>